I will be presenting the barriers to peer coaching participation among practicing surgeons, a thematic qualitative analysis. We have nothing to disclose. The need for ongoing skills development is well recognized in surgery. Participation in formal CMEs is required in most places to become and stay certified. But traditional CMEs are mostly didactic in the form of lectures, journal articles, and edited videos. The problem is that those modalities are sporadic, employ passive learning, are mostly remote, and are devoid of personalized feedback. Lack of feedback is, has been proven to change none or almost none of surgical practice. One article even cites the number of practice changes as 0%. Coaching, on the other hand, employs active learning techniques, uses self-defined goals, provides us with a co-learning opportunity because it can be bi-directional, and has personalized feedback. And it has shown to be vastly superior in translating into practice changes. These are a few examples of coaching that have led to successful outcomes. The problem is that the long-term participation is poor and the voluntary enrollment in the programs is minimal. It has been shown to be a powerful tool, but it doesn't get used that much. So, in order to understand why, we sought to explore the perceived barriers to peer coaching participation to inform the design of peer coaching programs in the future. To do this, as a first step, we used focus groups from a convenient sample of surgeons with practice privileges and provincial licensure in the greater Montreal area. We sent out an invitation by email in both English and French one month before the event and then sent out reminders on a weekly basis. We did a total of five groups, each one with four to six participants and they were divided into years in practice to avoid power dynamics. We employed trained facilitators as, that were volunteers to guide three-hour conversations using open-ended questions that were previously drafted. The audio recordings and notes were then transcribed and analyzed using grounded theory with an inductive method to generate conclusions from the emerging da data. We sent out a total of 52 invitations and got 27 participants, which accounts to 52%, out of which 26% were female and 74% male. Surgeon self-identified as working in an academic setting in 51%, university-affiliated hospitals in 47%, and community practice in 2%. As for time in practice, most surgeons had more than 15 years in practice, 33% of surgeons were between zero and five years in practice, and 26% of them were between six and 15 years in practice. From the conversation, we had the barriers divided into four themes, which we will address individually. The first and most cited theme was surgical culture. It was cited 59 times across all groups and included feelings of loss of control, fear of being judged, and fear of being deemed incompetent. Some of the examples to these were, I mean, you're putting yourself in a position where you're obviously gonna be judged somehow. You know, like what's wrong with him? Why does he need it? There must be a problem with her. So of course, it doesn't help your reputation. And unfortunately, the hospital is kind of a little village and word goes around. Or how am I to appear to others? I suddenly have a coach when nobody else does. The second most cited theme was the perceived lack of need and included already having other CME activities and the lack of need for a new skill. Some examples to these were, you get set in your own ways. I don't need coaching because I've been doing it for so long. It's stuff we're already doing. We don't need coaching for that. I don't think any of us thinks of coaching for ourselves. And I'm already going to conferences and workshops. Logistical constraints, such as the lack of time, 
low case volume, geography, privileges, and remuneration came up as the third most cited theme with 33 quotes. Examples were, having two surgeons in the OR at the same time is a challenge. Just the barriers, it's going to another hospital and operating to get the privileges there. It's remuneration more than cost. Somebody is obviously not getting paid. And it's time and distance. And last but not less important was the coach coachy dynamics. Surprisingly, 93% of participants stated they would want to be coached by someone they already knew and who knew them. Also, a lot of examples from relationship issues came out in this theme. Examples were, you need rapport with the person you're coaching. You need somebody you respect and knows you to a certain degree. And as a coach, I think you just have to be far enough along that people aren't going to be just offended with your presence. So now we know that the barriers to peer coaching participation among surgeons include surgical culture, perceived lack of need, logistical constraints, and relationship dynamics. Therefore, by addressing these barriers, we can design successful peer coaching programs that will translate to clinical practice changes with positive patient outcomes. We recognize that there are limitations to our study, like the residual power dynamics we could not control for in conversations. And since it was just a pilot study done in a convenient sample in North America, we may probably not be able to generalize. Therefore, our next steps are to explore these barriers and opinions in an international survey that was informed by the results of this study. Thank you very much.